It's a battle of comedy films, Farrell vs. Carol. Two will enter, but will either of them win? This is Movie Night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night. As always, I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Tonight we'll be reviewing two big-name summer comedy films from 2010 the first of which is The Other Guys. Released on August 6th, this buddy cop comedy film stars Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg as two bumbling desk jockeys at the NYPD, who finally get their big break, a chance to solve a real case outside the office. Following Anchorman, Talladega Nights, and Step Brothers, this is Ferrell's fourth collaboration with director Adam McKay, and it is definitely their strongest film yet. The Other Guys is first and foremost a comedy film, and from start to finish I was laughing my ass off at this film. Even if Farrell is, once again, mostly playing the same goofy idiot character we've seen him do many times in the past. Wahlberg, playing the straight man of the duo, does an absolutely tremendous job nailing every joke he's been given, almost as if he's been a comedic actor for his entire career. Laced with hilarious running gags, Eva Mendez and Michael Keaton in great supporting roles, and incredible cameos by Samuel L. Jackson, The Rock, and Derek Jeter, this film succeeds brilliantly even if it's just another vulgar Will Ferrell comedy film. But it also packs in loads of great action scenes, plenty of which could compete with your average summer shoot 'em up film. You take these two proven formulas and you blend them together perfectly and you end up with a hilariously entertaining 107 minute action film with plenty of repeatable one-liners. The one aspect I didn't care for though was the overly complex detective work that tied the plot together. For a police thriller, it works great, but for a simple action comedy film, I felt it was a bit too confusing in the midst of all the jokes and over-the-top car chases. That being said, Wahlberg and Farrell did an outstanding job as partners here, and I really hope to see them team up again in the future. The Other Guys was a hilariously ridiculous action police procedural. Well, that's my review. Now let's read some of yours. Let's bring in the rate of now to see how we both scored The Other Guys. A double eight. Even if this film wasn't funny, it still worked great as an action film. Luckily though, it is funny, and perhaps Farrell's best comedy in years. I scored it a great. Almost unanimously praising it for its goofball antics, you all seem to really love this film, giving it high praise for the laugh out loud moments and scoring it a great as well. But now it's time to move on to tonight's second film, Dinner for Schmucks. Released just one week before our first film on July 30th, this screwball comedy film stars Paul Rudd as Tim Conrad, a Los Angeles businessman who is desperate for a promotion at his company. When his boss, played devilishly by Bruce Greenwood, invites him to a dinner party where everyone is required to bring along the saddest, most pathetic idiot they can find, Conrad decides to bring Steve Carell's character and hopes he'll be dumb enough to get him that promotion. Right away, the plot seems unrealistic, overly convoluted, and at times too dramatic making the bizarre situations and motivations of the character even more baffling. Almost every scene in Dinner for Schmucks feels like a bad sitcom, to the point where you are literally embarrassed for the characters, and wonder why they don't just communicate better in the first place to avoid all of the messes they get themselves into. I also found issue trying to root for a protagonist who, for most of the 114 minute runtime, is essentially exploiting the stupidity of an unknowing victim, who besides being awkward and weird, is actually just a nice guy. Basic story problems aside, there is a lot to enjoy here. Paul Rudd is perhaps his best as the straight man, and Steve Carell is perhaps his best as the oddball. So their pairing here makes for some really funny moments. Zach Galifianakis and Jermaine Clement round out the supporting cast with terrific and equally bizarre performances that although are entirely unrealistic, do make for some of the film's funniest moments. In closing, Dinner for Schmucks is full of unlikable, unrealistic characters, but funny. Now that you've heard my review, let's see what you had to say in the YouTube comments. Okay, here's the rate of to show us how we both rated Dinner for Schmucks. A good and a cool. While this film had many flaws and an unlikable protagonist, it definitely still made me laugh at times, so I scored it a 6. Your reviews were much more mixed. Some people simply loved this film, and others were less than impressed. Your scores averaged out to a 7. Well, that does it for tonight's films. Now let's take a look at what's playing in theaters with some tweet critiques. <music> 
Remember, if you're going to the movies this weekend, make sure to submit your Twitter review using the JPMN hashtag to have it featured on an upcoming episode. Next week, we'll be taking a look at two films that couldn't be more different. The self-proclaimed B-level horror film that is as entertaining as it is ridiculous, Piranha 3D, and the critically acclaimed frontrunner for Best Picture of 2010, The Social Network, a film about the rise of Mark Zuckerberg's The Facebook. Both films are released on DVD Tuesday, giving you plenty of time to buy, rent, or download them before next week's episode. After you watch them, please let me know what you think about them by voting in the polls below or by leaving a comment review. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching Movie Night. I hope to see you right back here next Friday. Yeah.